Where we go, what we buy, who we are. To someone, we are data. We need data. Data is the oil of the 21st century. If it's regarded as critical as crude, it's going to be valuable and serve as a foundation for a wide variety of businesses. Data is just like crude. It's valuable, but if unrefined, it cannot really be used. It has to be changed into gas, plastic, chemicals, etc., to create a valuable entity that drives profitable activity. So must data be broken down, analyzed, for it to have value. This was written in a blog post back in 2006. It's been repeated and amplified, first by marketers, then by entrepreneurs, and now by business leaders and policymakers. Just like oil, we're running out of data.、Uh, we don't have enough data, especially high-quality data. Right now, there are problems in sharing data. How's the data shared, and what protections are in place? China goes through with, with a very unique ways, quite different with the other countries. Typically,、uh, quite different with the U.S. and Europe. This is Tang Qifeng, the general manager of the Shanghai Data Exchange. Amazon have a data marketplace. They listing about uh, like uh, three to four thousands, include a satellite mapping. Every year, I think they will generate about like ten billion U.S. dollar for the marketplace. But for China, we use、uh, another way. In a country like China, with 1.4 billion people, there is a mountain of data out there, and it required a new paradigm to manage its trade. We were looking to the U.S., where the whole business with data is driven by the big tech companies, and there was not so much influence by the government. This is Lars Baumann, the China ambassador of the International Data Spaces Association. Then, on the other side of the world, in China, we saw the government, Chinese government, makes a lot of rules. So the Shanghai Data Exchange began trading today. Formally launched the first digital asset to be listed on. Creating centralized marketplaces for data products is an example of how these rules are being put into effect. The Shanghai Data Exchange is just one of the official trading marketplaces backed by the government. 1,700 data products are listed on the exchange. Like the country around China, like South Korea, Singapore, they using the similar ways like us.、Uh, they have a centralized marketplace to listing the product and to provide the market function to the different parties. What do centralized marketplaces mean to data trading? Are they actually necessary? To get some answers, I visited a road transport data service provider in Shanghai, one of the companies responsible for issuing electronic toll collection or ETC cards, which allow non-stop passage of freight vehicles on expressways. It's one of many companies that list their data products on the Shanghai Data Exchange. The expressway toll collection system collects more than 10,000 different data points. The data accumulated every day is calculated in petabytes. Is this the largest volume anywhere in the world? What does that mean? China has the most highway mileage, 178,000 kilometers, ranking first in the world. China has more than 11,000 toll gates. When a car passes the ETC, the system collects the information from the license plate, whose car it is, the mileage, the time, the direction, and the charging fees. For banking, insurance, and logistics, all these data are collected by China's Ministry of Transport, the central government department responsible for transportation and logistics management. Our data products have been accessed more than 20 million times in less than a year. The company is authorized to develop products that help analyze and protect the data. Upon the arrival, I was first surprised by the numbers on the screen, showing the road transport volume in China and the large coverage of the data network. It's a highly dispersed group of people with around seven million micro, small, and medium-sized logistics firms. On average, one company owns just 1.5 trucks. A large number of cars are owned by individual drivers, so there's not intensive administration. It's hard for financial institutions to get a risk profile. 
As of the end of 2019, there were already nearly 200 million cars equipped with an ETC device. But who would want data from road toll gates? In the past, traditional financial institutions were hesitant to enter the road cargo transport industry. They think of it as high risk. There were internet platforms offering loans with annual interest rates over 30 percent. Now, some banks are cooperating with us. They can get logistics operation information and get data support after loan issuance. They are providing a less than 5 percent interest rate. The government and the companies have been collecting the data and using it to develop new products. But how is that data traded? How does it get from the company that collects it to the firm that wants to buy it? This is where the official trading marketplace comes into play. A lot of companies, they doing the data training based on you know, company to company. You know. They are very focused about the data quality and the price. But for the time moving on, the different parties, they will think about all those things based on the compliance is okay or not. So they were looking for the model to move in the marketplace to use our infrastructure. The second thing is the uh, cost issues. So we develop the infrastructures to help the uh, different parties to reduce their search cost, uh, their make decision cost, and their deliver cost. The annual trading volume of data products at the Shanghai Data Exchange exceeded 100 million yuan in 2022 just one year after it was set up, and demand is increasing rapidly, with trading volume in 2023 exceeding 1 billion yuan. Inclusive finance is a key business transformation area for the banking industry in recent years. For our banks, it is necessary for data exchanges to provide us with compliant data usage and standardized data applications. When it comes to data trading, you might think when a buyer makes a deal with a data provider, they are then simply provided with a full package of information. But it doesn't always work like that now. Sometimes a buyer just gets a right to access the database. This is actually a concept proposed by the Shanghai Data Exchange. It's very good, and it's called No Trading Without Scenarios. When a person applies for a loan, they will first sign an authorization agreement, allowing banks to seek information through legal channels to evaluate the applicant's credit. Banks then send a requirement to the API connector and cross a firewall to access the intranet, where the database gives the bank a credit score. The score will get back to the bank after crossing another firewall. In this digital era, data sharing has brought with it both convenience and rapid industrial growth. But it's hard not to think about privacy issues. What if my data is exposed to those I don't want to share it with? Usually, the product services are over the internet, but all the data processing should be completed in the intranet provided by the government. The original data cannot be placed on the internet. All the data products are not allowed to be cached. Security is at the foundation of all these activities. China has put a number of regulations in place regarding data security during the past decade. In mid-2017, the country instituted the cybersecurity law. Three years later, the country put cybersecurity review measures into effect. The measures stipulate that operators in critical information infrastructure are required to go through national security reviews when purchasing network products and services. The year 2021 saw two laws protecting information safety coming to force in the country, the Personal Information Protection Law and the Data Security Law. If the person accesses the data without authorization, that's illegal. And we also track if the company is accessing the data based on the scenario it applied for, and how many times it has accessed the data. We track it with blockchain technology so that people cannot falsify the records. Those who violate the regulations could pay a huge price. Chinese car hailing app DD was one of the first big names to have crashed into the country's data security laws and was fined 1.2 billion US dollars in 2022. While some might like to think of data as the oil of the 21st century, unlike oil, we don't always know where data comes from, who's selling, who's buying, and how it's being used. With an endless stream of it being collected and packaged up by different companies and organizations, encouraging them to manage security and privacy is an issue that won't go away. The concept of data sovereignty means that you can decide 
what you share, how long you share, and also what not to share, and also to say what is allowed to do with my data and what is not allowed. China is very interested in that. There is really fast progress, so it's really, it's really China speed, like we say in Germany. The true potential of China's centralized marketplaces is far from being fully realized. In 2022, China's data trading market was worth almost 88 billion yuan, or 12 billion US dollars. That's two-thirds of the Asian market and more than 13% of the global total. But only a tiny fraction of this trading was made through these official marketplaces. So how does the government plan to get more trading done through its official exchanges? In October 2023, China established its National Data Bureau. In the months leading up to its establishment, the central government vowed to strictly manage the number of data trading marketplaces while creating standardized and highly efficient exchanges. 60 data trading marketplaces had been registered by the time the bureau was established, but many of them are no longer operating. It's obvious that countries pursuing quality over quantity, preferring to have a smaller number of marketplaces with the capacity to provide value-added services. In the US, you can find a lot of things is, is the organized by a company. We call a commercial company, they do this kind of things. But in China, you know, we uh, take this the, uh, data product like a data asset. So a lot of the uh, market function should play by uh, like us. They have the asset. They can use the asset using different uh, roles. You can move to your balance sheet. In the history, you use the cash to invest a company. But in this area, you can use your data asset to invest a company. Also, data asset is very interesting things is go to the uh, security areas. Different markets have different ways of conducting data trading, whether it's between companies or through a third-party marketplace. The pros and cons of these different systems are still unclear. Which is better at preventing data leakages? Which is more reasonably priced? I'm not here to draw to a consensus, but I imagine people would like to have choices right. What do you think?